My name is Captain Greg Talapa. I'm the commanding officer of Coast Guard Cutter Healy. Healy is a Coast Guard icebreaker and the U.S. military's only surface vessel or ship that deploys to and is capable of operating in the ice-covered waters of the Arctic. Follow me while we take a tour. We stopped here because one of the other conning stations that is unique to Healy is visible from here. It's called the Loft Con. So that doorway up there opens into what we call a loft con. It gets you another 40 feet high to high above the bridge where watch standers normally are. In the ice, that's important because you can see much farther out. You can check the, uh, the path of the ship or the course that we're taking and find the path of least resistance. So in ice breaking, that's important because the very first rule of ice breaking is avoid it if you can. So if you get a higher conning stage, a higher height of eye, you can see farther, predict where the ship is gonna go better by visual, your visual acuity and pick those routes that are uh, less congested and lower ice uh, concentrated. So it uh, makes for a much easier sail. Let's go. This is the helicopter control office. is like a small city. This is the air traffic control location for our flight deck. This is a, a neat space HCO, a helicopter control office, and uh, again, kind of framing things in terms of Keeley is a small city. Come this way. This is Healy Science Spaces. This is the bread and butter of the ship. This is why we exist. This is where our science is conducted. This is where the science experiments and the science collection and all the science activity uh, occurs. Welcome to the main lab. This is really where most of the operations, most of the science activity originates from. This is an unmanned system that operates under the water. There's an unmanned system over there that acts uh, autonomously. Coast Guard is also experimenting with the utility and usefulness of 3D printers underway. Uh, but things break and when you're out at sea, particularly as an icebreaker, far, far away from any sort of shore support, uh, a 3D printer comes in handy. So we are starting to explore more and more opportunities for how to employ a 3D printer uh, to support not only science, but also shipboard operations. When thing, things break, the 3D printer seems to be pretty handy. So follow me. I think it's appropriate that we end our tour uh, in, this, in one of the science spaces. This concludes our tour. I'm really glad you joined us. Healy, is, uh, it's got a proud history, a proud namesake, and uh, I'm glad you joined us for the tour. Thank you, have a good day. I did have a couple cousins who were officers in the Coast Guard and, and I saw how incredible their lives were and just the fact that they were, they were so young but they, were, they had so much responsibility and, and they told me about what they, would, what they were doing on their boats and I was like, wow, that's really neat. And, and so I think sophomore year of high school I set my, set my goal to attend the academy. And so when I was a senior or first class cadet, um, they send you out every summer to different Coast Guard units for the entire summer. And so I got to come here last summer for about two and a half months and also got, got an idea of uh, what Healy does and what their mission set is. So in the engineering realm on Healy, there's two watch standards at all time. You have a technician of the watch, which is the person that's responsible for conducting grounds of the ship, just ensuring the general safety and is always at the ready to go perform initial actions for any casualty that were to happen. Um, and then the other watch standard is the engineer of the watch, which I just recently qualified in. And the engineer of the watch is responsible for monitoring um, the entire engineering plant. 
during that watch, you'll monitor the plant, make sure that any alarms that come up, you would usually send your technician to the watch to go check out and make sure that the, everything's sound. Um, and other than that, you are training the new watch standards that will come and join the watch rotations. Healy is unique in the Coast Guard because its main mission is to perform research in the Arctic. Basically, it provides support and a platform for so many different organizations to perform research. It's fun to be able to support scientific advancements, and even last year they discovered a new species of jellyfish, which is cool because even though we don't, at least I don't directly assist with these you know, scientific research operations, it's, it's really awesome to know that we are supporting this and, and we kind of make it possible. I think the way I've changed is that I have grown into this role where I can um, accept responsibility and that's I think a big thing for young people and, and the Coast Guard is full of, full of a lot of young people who ex accept a responsibility to adhere to these really very high standards and it's a really cool job. It's a, it's a job that not too many people my age get the opportunity to have so much responsibility. It's pretty cool. Not many people get that. I'm Jen Haley, an ensign in the U.S. Coast Guard, stationed on Coast Guard Cutter Healy. It's the largest and most technologically advanced polar icebreaker in the U.S. Coast Guard's fleet. The Cutter Healy is longer than a football field and has over 34,000 kilowatts of power at its disposal. The Healy is truly one of a kind in the Coast Guard. The icebreaker deploys exclusively to the Arctic, but that's not the only thing that makes the Healy unique. Its scientific research mission sets the Healy apart from all other seafaring missions. This makes the Healy an important strategic asset to conduct critical research. With thousands of square feet of lab space, lifting cranes, and the capability to house 50 scientists, it's perfectly outfitted for its mission. On this first scientific expedition of 2017, Chief Scientist Scott Tripp is part of the Coast Guard's research and development team. The Healy is a fantastic vessel for us to work from. It gets us right where we need to be to develop technologies that are specifically suited for the Arctic. Right here is a 3D printer that's active right now and it's printing a couple things. And we use this because in the Arctic, there's no hardware store around the corner, there's no infrastructure at all. We can't even pull into shore with this boat. That means if the scientists need a part that doesn't have to be metal, they can simply print it. It's working out so well, the Coast Guard is looking to outfit every Coast Guard ship with a 3D printer fleet-wide. Autonomy is the name of the game for this particular mission. Using aerial and underwater drones, researchers are able to see what's going on wherever they're doing their research. The reason we're so interested in autonomy is because it is a force multiplier for the Coast Guard. Rather than sending two, three ships up, we can send one ship up, and if we've got this type of technology active out there, they can cover as much ground. It'll be cheaper, less people up there, and it works really well. Enter our first experimental piece of hardware. Simply called a mobile sensor platform, it's able to capture multiple video feeds and transmit them up to 70 miles away. We can put a multitude of uh, sensors on it, such as uh, you know, sensors for depth or sonar, uh, maybe a fluorimeter for oil detection. Placing one of these every 50 miles allows vast areas to be monitored and studied, whether counting marine mammals, looking for oil spills, or just checking for other ships. Another aspect of the Healy's research is how they work with other agencies. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA for short, is working to develop inexpensive technologies to collect precise readings researchers can use to improve weather prediction. So essentially what it does is it starts at the surface and dives down the water column using buoyancy uh, to control it. It has wings and a rudder that control pitch and roll and is designed to operate in shallow water, setting it apart from most other gliders engineered to work at much deeper depths. Not far away is a state-of-the-art oil skimmer. Because of the increasing uh, risk of uh, oil spill in Arctic, we need a, spe a specific skimmer to tackle the problem, how to skim properly in a icy water while the ice patches can block the way of the convention on the skimmer. You can look around you, you've got cranes here, you've got an A-frame off the rear, two, two knuckle cranes, we've got winches everywhere. We spend most of our time out on this deck 
launching equipment, bringing it back in, launching small boats, running them out so that we can test our technologies. This is a great place to work from, and the unique part about it is it can get up into the ice, because we have things we have to do on the ice, under the ice, and around the ice. So we go right up there, we get right into the thick of it, and we really put our technologies to the test. These scientists and researchers, alongside the United States Coast Guard, armed with science, are making the world a cleaner, safer, and more predictable place to live. There's a lot that can go wrong once divers enter the world of oceans, and nobody knows that better than the U.S. Coast Guard. Back in 2006, unfortunately, a tragic accident took place up here in the Arctic where we lost two of our Coast Guard divers. Uh, after that accident happened, the Coast Guard took a pause, and they took a, a hard look at our program. Eleven years later, Coast Guard divers, along with the Navy, are training on board the USS Healy with past experiences in mind. Sometimes the mission takes these divers far under the surface. The deeper they go, pressure builds, gases and tissues compress, and simply coming up too quickly can be deadly. Basically what's happening, there's a bubble somewhere in their body and it's doing some bad stuff to them. Uh, so by putting them inside the chamber, it's going to take that bubble and shrink it on down and allow the bubble pass the proper way. This type of emergency is referred to as a diving casualty, and that's exactly what the Coast Guard is simulating. There's only one truly safe way to treat a dive casualty, and that's with a decompression chamber, and it's a must for dive operations off the Healy. So the chamber system is meant to simulate putting the diver back at pressure. So taking that expanded gas bubble found in your body and shrinking it back down to size, breathing 100% oxygen and allowing reabsorption of that air gas into the tissues, causing full relief. Down three, one, two, three. This chamber belongs to the Navy, which is why Navy divers are on board for this Coast Guard exercise. When it comes to dive operations, everyone has one thing in mind. Safety is paramount in everything that we do. Being in this platform, diving in the Arctic, as well as the Antarctic, where the exposures are way above our limitations, but that's why there's certain guidelines that we must follow. Two branches of the military, the U.S. Coast Guard and Navy divers working side by side in the Arctic, training for underwater missions by taking safety measures well before they ever break the surface.